Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. Goldman Sachs recently released a report which examined South Africa's post-apartheid economy and the nation's role as an economic engine in Africa. But despite progress and promise, the nation remains mired in poverty and income and wealth inequality and is one of the highest in the world. We are now joined by Leos de Kumana. He's a professor of economics at the University of Massachusetts Amherst and the director of the African Policy Program at Perry. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much and thanks for the opportunity. So Leos, can you just talk to us about South Africa's role as a growth engine in Africa? Thank you very much, yes. Um, <clears throat> in fact, if you, if you look at uh, uh, what's happening on the continent, there is plenty of things to celebrate in terms of a renewed economic dynamism in the continent. We see a private sector expanding and, and also growth, growth rates are accelerating and even poverty declining slowly in some, in some countries. Now, uh, South Africa being the largest economy on the continent, uh, about $300 billion, uh, uh, which is actually about 25% one one, uh, of, of the, the whole continent's uh, economy, it can be an engine of, of growth in several ways. One, it's a, it's a, it's a major source of, uh, of investment. If you look at, at uh, many African countries, you see evidence of increasing <clears throat> foreign direct investment from South Africa, we typically find, think of foreign direct investment as coming from, uh, from overseas, but there is plenty of op a potential of intra-Africa foreign direct investment. And South Africa is a major, major, can play a major role in that. The other one is that South Africa is a, is a, is a large market. So for countries that can actually diversify their economies and produce exportable goods, that gives them a market where they can sell, especially the countries in, in the region. A third is, is, uh, is technology. One of the constraints to uh, diversification and economic expansion in African countries is low technical technology content of their production, production system. And South Africa on, the, on that front is much ahead. So exchange and trade with South Africa can, can increase technological content or production in African countries. And that would, could accelerate not just growth, but also increase the resilience of the economy. But despite all this increase in growth, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily being spread around to, to different um, sections of society. Because according to the New York Times, only 47% of South Africans remain poor, and inequality is one of the highest in the world, as I noted before. And according to the IMF, South Africa's economy will grow much slower than the rest of sub-Saharan Africa in 2014. What is responsible for South Africa's inequality, and could it undermine South Africa's role as an economic engine and a model worth emulating by other countries? That's a, that's a great question. And let me start with the, with the last part of the question, which is that the, the negative impact of inequality on, on growth prospects. Yes, in any economy where you have high inequality, that's a, 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 that can be a drag on growth, including not even talking about the social negative social impacts in terms of social tensions, political instability that can, can arise from, from inequality. But in, a, in the case of, uh, of South Africa, uh, the high inequality is, is attributed to, to a number of things. Two, the two main things is South African economy is your typical capitalist economy where the, where the, the, pro, the, pro, the proceeds and the gains for gro for, for, from growth basically accrue mostly to capital. So the, the owners of, of capital get the maximum benefits of growth, and the labor gets much less. But in the case of South Africa, you have the legacy of history, where you have a large number of the, the, the majority of the population has not been integrated in the modern economy. We're talking about a two economy system, where you have the modern economy with high wages, high technology, which includes a small, a small amount of a number of the population, which is the high skilled uh, labor. But then the, the second part of the economy is the informal sector, which, which, which employs a large number of the population, mainly the blacks, unemployed, I mean, unskilled. And those have, have very low wages, very, very uh, fragile living, living, living light, light, livelihood. And the, the, what, you, what you see is a difficulty of making a transition from the apartheid, apartheid regime to a more democratic, inclusive, inclusive system where you have the, the blacks integrating in the, in, in, the, in the modern sector. And here, education is key to making the transition. 
All right, Léonce de Kumana, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.